All right, guys, use hashtag preseason. We're focused right now on Cowboys Niners week one of the preseason to get your questions on the show. That is hashtag preseason. A lot of you are already doing it, so use hashtag preseason. Also, get the Eagles fans in the comments section because I don't know why they keep showing up. But thanks for watching. Glad we live rent-free for with you. All right, first up, Alfredo Hernandez. Do you think Dak will start week one versus the Niners? Um, I don't think Dak plays. If he does play, it's going to be like a series. Uh, I don't think you're going to see much of any of most of the starters this week. And that kind of plays in here too. Uh, it's Family Guy's question. Who will be our starting O-line? I assume for week one of the preseason, you're not going to have... Xavier, or you're not going to have Zach Martin. I honestly don't know if you're going to have Tyron or Travis Frederick out there. So it might end up being Cam Fleming, Connor Williams, Joe Looney, Xavier Suofilo, and Leo Collins. And then the benches quickly come in after that, mostly for Collins. I don't think he's going to play that much. He doesn't really, doesn't really need to, to play a whole lot necessarily. You, If Frederick does play, I think you'll see Joe Looney get some reps at right guard. I think that'd be a very smart move there by the Dallas Cowboys. All right, Johnny Lopez, who will be the rookie standout during the preseason? Good question. Um, on offense, if just hard about him. Probably Tony Pollard, especially if he gets some chance to return some, some uh, kicks and punts. You hope it's Tristan Hill. Joe Jackson's made some nice plays during camp, though, so far. Some UDFAs as well. Watch out for Daniel Wise and Luke Gifford. Just mentioning that one. All right. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce the first name. Is it Bjorn? Bijan? Let me know. By the way, Manzuri, which is a great, great last name. Uh, do the Cowboys va value Daniel Ross? They do value him, uh, but if they could get a late round pick back in a trade for him, I think they would take that as long as everyone else is healthy and playing well on the defensive line. So, so thank you for that super chat, my man. I appreciate it. Destroyer Dog, how many preseason games will we win? Not many. The Cowboys, historically speaking, are not a good preseason team. That's why it's okay to bet against them, because they're just not going to fare that well, and that's really okay in the end. All right, Andrew Purdue, do you think Xavier Woods will break out? I do. I think Xavier Woods is going to have a big year for the Cowboys. They desperately need playmaking in the secondary. And by playmaking... I mean interceptions and takeaways, not just great coverage and pass breakups. Forced turnovers, and Xavier Woods so far in camp has shown that ability. I think Woods is primed for a breakout year. All right, from uh, your boys Chris and Kevin, a joint account I guess, do we have a top five, maybe top three O-line with Zach Martin? That should be the expectation, yeah. If everyone's healthy, the expectation should be top five, if not top three, that means Zach Martin is healthy. Frederick is back, and he looks pretty good so far. Smith stays healthy as well, and there are no injuries to Sewell and or McGovern or Looney or Collins if those guys need to go there. So top five should be uh, the, the expectation there. All right, David, does Jerry ever start enforcing the fines on Zeke? Great question. Um, he can if he wants, and I think at a certain point he will. But I also think this for Jerry Jones. It's clearly about the money right now for Zeke. Jerry doesn't care that much about the fine stuff. So I think for Jerry, he would prefer not to. And he was really unclear if he was going to and asked about it. So as long as the deal gets done and Zeke's here in time for the, for the, se for the season, I don't think you see Zeke get fined. All right, back now to the preseason side of things. Cowboys, Niners, some players that I am watching for. I saw this in the comments earlier, so I figured we'd do it. Tony Pollard, for obvious reasons. All of the receivers make sense. I am focused on John V. Johnson and Reggie Davis. Those are the two, so far at least, that have had the most work with the ones. I want to see them be more consistent. Davis had a fumble in the blue in the blue-white scrimmage, and Johnson had, a, had a, uh, some ill-timed drops. It's key there. Blake Jarwin, not to see how he plays, but how much does Blake Jarwin actually play? Is he going to be out there a lot? Or is he going to get, like, the starting limits? Because I don't think I've seen any of Jason Witten. Very curious there. And I'll include him on offense. Brett Maher. If he misses field goals, go ahead and panic. I am, I am allowing the panic button at that point because he has got to be better. Defensively, Dorrance Armstrong, Taco Charlton. 
We just mentioned it earlier on the show. Robert Quinn, suspended. Lawrence and Crawford are hurt right now. Those guys might be your week one preseason starters, along with Kerry Hyder in that group too. They have a chance to step up and improve their play and secure a roster spot. Luke Gifford, Sean Lee said he's going to lead the team in preseason tackles. Make note of how often he plays on defense, and more importantly, does he start on special teams? If he does, he might make the team after all. Donovan Verlumba, do not sleep on him. I know everyone's excited about Michael Jackson, and everyone's excited uh, about uh, Chris Westry as well. Don't sleep on Alumba there. And also George Aoka, who hasn't passed Kavon Frazier yet, at least not fully. That's kind of an issue for him. A, make an impact, but even more importantly, just making the team. So those are the five defensive guys I am watching for. And here's my question for you guys. Will you watch the Cowboys vs. 49ers preseason game? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I'll give some shout-outs here. I see Nick is going to, uh, Afan, uh, Beyond, Brian, Jonathan. Lots of Ys in there. So, you know, make sure you're subscribed, and we'll do a watch party if we get to 30K. I hope most of you will watch it. It's, it's preseason, but it's still fun. All right, next up here from Sean. What will you be looking for in from Tristan Hill during the preseason? Uh, I want to see, A, what unit he goes out there with, given that Malik Collins and Woods, I think, will play at least a little bit. I also want to see if he can be disruptive. That's what I want from year one out of Tristan Hill. I'm not too focused on his run defense for this team this year. Long term, of course I am. But for 2019, can he pressure the quarterback and make an impact that way on passing downs? All right, Pikachu fam, do you think that Jason Witten is still elite after one year off? Well, he wasn't elite the last time we saw him. Like, so, so unfortunately, no. Uh, I don't think that Witten is still elite because, in reality, Witten hasn't been elite in a long time. Jonathan Lonzo, is there still a good tight end in free agency? No, there's not. Uh, that might change once we get to roster cuts, but your best three, pretty clearly by far, are Witten, Jarwin, and Schultz. All right, from Mark, what gives Jason Garrett a contract extension? I believe he gets it if we make it to the conference championship. I think that's about right. Uh, somewhere in that range gets you to the gets him in there. If he gets further, of course he's got it. If he gets to like the divisional round and then Dak gets hurt, he probably gets it too. But that's your general baseline, I think. Has to go farther than he's gone before to get the extension. NFC's tub with more and a question mark at kicker combined. Do you think we attempt two point conversions a bit? Hadn't thought about this before, actually. So great question. I hope so. I go for two every single time. And I go for fourth down almost every single time. Can you convert, you know, two and a half, three yards, 50% of the time? I would hope so. Therefore, go for two. So I hope they go for two every time because let's get that extra point spin. That could be a real game changer there. Steven Johnson, could we see any trick plays from Kellen Moore? Actually, yes. And in fact, we already have. They busted out a reverse in the blue-white blue -right scrimmage. Yesterday, and I think today as well, uh, they busted out some flea flickers. So yes, you will see more trick plays from Kellen Moore. And if he's showing those in camp, I bet he's got a few more up his sleeve. All right, Kenny Braxton, what's the deadline where Zeke starts to think about coming back without a contract? It's got to be game checks. Like, he can't miss out on game checks. And even the ultimate, ultimate deadline, I think, worst case scenario, week 10. If he's not there by week 10, his contract tolls, and he is now under contract for an extra year, even if he comes back in week 11. So I, I, I would still be surprised if Zeke skips regular season games. Anthony Carter, do you think we will finally use a read option? Oh, you guys are asking great questions. I hope so. Now, and this comes back to the quarterback side of things, Cooper Rush and Mike White, they're not that great uh, when it comes down to running. They're a little bit more of your pocket passer type. But I hope that you do see some more read options. Taron Christian, mentioning him here right now. He's the number four right now, but if you don't send any of Dak in the preseason, Cooper Rush becomes your one, Mike White becomes your two, and Taron Christian has a lot more mobility. He ran like a, a sub 4-6, I think, at his pro day, which I know it's pro day, but still. So if you really want to focus on that, maybe you can find a way for Christian White to be your 
backup third string quarterback, special team guy, basically Jamil Showers 2.0. All right, Manster 54. Will we see some Wildcat in the preseason? I, I don't think so. Um, I don't think they want to show that. I do think it's in the playbook, but I don't think you're going to see a lot of it in the preseason. All right, guys, today's show is brought to you by our friends over at my book. Get over to chatsports.com slash Cowboys. Use promo code GOCOWBOYS for a 100% deposit bonus. You put down 50 bucks, they'll match it. Put down 100 bucks, they'll match that too. That's promo code GOCOWBOYS at chatsports.com slash Cowboys. All right, Jonas, could you rate every rookie from best to worst from what we saw in camp? Um, I don't know if we'll do every rookie. We will do winners and losers, so that'll kind of be my my outlook outlet there. Um, frankly, Pollard and Jackson, my, and Joe Jackson, might actually be your top two right now. And then the guys who got cut, like Larry Allen, well, they're obviously worse there in the end. All right, super chat again from David. Thank you very much, David. What's a breakout year from Malik Collins? Six sacks. Um, how about five sacks? That would have been like third on the. That would probably be third on the team if he gets five sacks. So. Uh, six sacks, I think, would be a breakout year. And if he can pr produce some tackles for loss, that obviously helps. But I think that five, six sack range, that would be a breakout year for Dallas. And guess what? Dallas really wants that to happen. All right, Pikachu fan 920. Against the Niners, I think there's going to be a tough battle. Um, yes and no. It's not going to be like preseason battle. Or it's not going to be like, it's going to be a preseason battle. It's, it, the backups are going to try hard, but... You know, they're not going to play for overtime. It's not going to be over the top. Also, shout out. I know it's the name. I'm going to do it anyway. D's nuts for the super chat. All right, Keel Hayes. Can Tavon Austin be a key piece in the new offense? Speed kills. I, I'll d well, define key. Like, is key making an impact? If so, yes. Is key getting 50, t 50 t touches? I don't think so. Not if you include, not if you don't include the special teams. So, he can have an impact. But I have a tough time seeing him becoming anything more than number four or maybe number three, depending on how things go at the wide receiver depth chart. All right, Michael Caldwell, who has the most to gain from the first preseason game? I think it's got to be one of the defensive ends. Like Dorrance Armstrong or Taco or Kerry Hyder or Jackson, with Quinn now suspended for two games and Crawford also facing one. I, I mean, this could be an open battle for your other defensive end starter, potentially. So Armstrong, Hyder, Charlton, Jackson, even Jalen Jelks, and they played Daniel Wysom at defensive end too. Uh, I think at that point, those guys jump out to me as the people who make sense as the most to gain. And then also I think the backup quarterback battle. Because I don't know this year, guys, if Dallas will end up taking three. They might only end up taking two. So that backup quarterback battle, Rush and White and Christian, who is going to be a Taysom Hill, Jamil Showers type for now, and maybe he's a practice squad guy, that's one worth watching. I also really want to see what the Cowboys do at quarterback in terms of how the snaps are split up. So which quarterback are you most excited to see against the 49ers? Type R for Cooper Rush, W for Mike White, and C for Taron Christian. I would not have said this two days ago, even a day ago. I kind of want to see Taron Christian, not just a quarterback, but how is he used? If he gets special teams reps, that's noteworthy. I do not think he makes it as only a backup, but as a backup quarterback, just utility guy, well, I think it starts to make a little bit of sense there because he's just not active to be a backup, but in that other role, it makes some sense. All right, Demarcus Rutledge. Who will get more snaps against the Niners, Mike Weber or Alfred Morris? Um, I predict it'll be Alfred, it'll be uh, Mike Weber instead of Alfred Morris because Weber is younger. He needs more reps. Alfred Morris is a veteran. Like he doesn't need 30 snaps in this game. Mike Weber could probably use it more so than him. So I, th I think you see Alfred Morris get a little bit, uh, or excuse me, Mike Weber get more reps than Alfred Morris. All right, noob gamer. Any chance of another signing for a free agent running back in case Zeke doesn't sign by week four? If he's not there by week four, we're freaking out every single week. Um, there is a chance if it is someone, maybe it's a Jay Ajayi, but I think for now the Cowboys want to see what Mike Weber and, and Alfred Morris and Jackson and especially Tony Pollard can end up doing. Super chat coming in here. 
Will Tony Pollard be the Alvin Kamara? I, I don't think he's going to be Alvin Kamara. I don't think that I don't think that's an unf, I don't think that's a fair expectation to place on Tony Pollard to suddenly be a top 5 back in the NFL. I put my expectations at Lance Dunbar. If he can be Lance Dunbar for you, I'm happy and I'm excited. But being on that, I think that's just too much to ask, although I do have some expectations, hence the Kool-Aid here for Tony Pollard. Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.